So this year we decided to do something a little different for our keynote, and we're going to have a conversation between two celebrities. John Grisham, who needs little introduction to this group, he's a longtime champion of the focused ultrasound technology and a highly passionate member of the board of directors of the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. And we all know he's the world's best known storyteller. And he's the author of this book, which is probably the greatest coup in the history of medical device public relations. And then we have Chip Reed, who is a highly acclaimed journalist. He received his law education and his public affairs education at Princeton and Columbia and Vassar. His face is familiar to all of us because he is a CBS journalist who often appears on the CBS This Morning show, the Sunday Morning show, and the CBS Evening News show. After 9-11, he reported extensively from the Mideast. He was in Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, Egypt, Israel, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and so on. He was embedded with the lead battalion of the Marines as they fought their way from Kuwait to Baghdad, where he was engaged in heavy combat. Gentlemen, Chip, take it away. All right, thank you. So I do hear that you're a pretty darn good storyteller. So tell us the story of how you got involved and got interested in focused ultrasound. Well, first and first, uh, most importantly, I live in Charlottesville. And that's, uh, that's where Neil has been for the past 25 years. And I've known Neil for a long time. I guess about six or seven years ago, Neil uh, became obsessed with the story of focused ultrasound. He started the foundation there 10 years ago, 2006. And uh, on a shoestring budget and a, and a prayer and a, a dream. And um, my background is not you know, in, in medicine and science. And I stayed away from those courses when I was in, in school. And I loved reading and history and, you know, uh, eventually writing, but nothing to do with um, medicine. I was a lawyer for 10 years, you know. But uh, Neil was pressing me to join the board. And I said, Neil, I, I have nothing to offer. This is, again, this is not my field. And he said, we need to raise awareness, and we got to raise a bunch of money. And then about that time, there were some pretty serious health issues um, that my mother was facing and my sister. Uh, she had breast cancer. My mother had cancer of the uterus. Uh, kind of the family got ambushed, you know, a double whammy of um, cancer. And um, that kind of made me stop and take a closer look at, you know, what Neil was saying. And, I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe I can help. Maybe I can um, join the board, raise awareness, and maybe, uh, maybe raise some money for this. And once I started, once I got, kind of got the bug, you know, it really became, um, has become something I enjoy because we, we all believe in the technology and the science, and we all believe uh, in the foundation and where it's going, and um, that's how I got on the board. And then this happened. Yeah. How did this come about? And by, for people who are not seeing this but listening, I'm talking about the book, A Non-Legal Thriller, The Tumor by John Grisham. I guess about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, um, I sat down with Neil and said, I'm serious about this. It's going to be um, easy for me because it's very short. It's a short story. Uh, it's going to be difficult because it's, it's science and medicine and technology and you've got to help me there. And the story came about because I've known Neil for so long. These are his stories. This is his life for the past, his professional career. People with brain tumors. He's, he's, he's lost a lot of patients because he couldn't save them. And he's seen a lot of suffering, a lot of death, and a lot of, uh, just a lot of human misery. Those make good stories as sad as they are. Uh, they have the elements of a good story. but. Neil, over the years, has told me one story after the other about a patient he has or a friend or whatever. And 
Uh, he's very discreet. Sometimes he would, you know, use a name. If a lot of times it's somebody we knew locally. You know, everybody, everybody we know, uh, all of us have people who, who go through this. And so this is the story of Neil's life. I've heard these stories from him, and I still hear them. Now, there are probably some people in this room or watching or listening someplace who, who don't know what the book happens without giving everything away. Yeah. But there are two endings to this book. Give well, us, it's, give a, us a brief it's, synopsis. It's a, it's a story of a, of a young guy who's 35, 36 years old who is, um, he starts showing the symptoms of uh, a brain tumor. And he, and he finally has a seizure, and they do the, the scan, and there's the tumor. And he is facing this... Um, and he's got three kids. Wife and three kids. He's successful, lives in the suburbs. Wife and pretty wife, three kids, and a nice life. Life's good. And one day, the next day, he's facing his own mortality. Um, I had a good friend, a very good friend of mine, who in February of this year uh, had a seizure, uh, the scan, glioblastoma, grade four, brain tumor. He lived four months. He died in June. Uh, he was 57 years old, just gone and, you know, we, 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 we can all tell those stories. So I, I just took one of those stories. And so the guy uh, in, the, in the book, uh, I think his name is Paul, he goes through the surgery. I kind of walk you through the surgery, you know, the, the, you know, the, the light version of it. It's enough to tell the story. And uh, the after effects from the surgery, what happened in the months that followed uh, to him physically, what happened to his family, what happened to his job. And then uh, the, the, the tumor came back. The tumor comes back, and he has a second surgery, which is a, a, a not successful. And after um, nine months, uh, you know, these tumors, you, you're going to live about a year. That's a, I don't care what they do to you. If you ignored it, you'd probably live, you know, six to 12 months. Uh, if you had surgery, chemo, radiation, whatever, you're probably going to live about a year. That's, that's statistically. And so I make that point in, in the story. And he died nine months later. Estimated cost uh, $300,000 in his life. That's the first part of the book. The second part of the book starts by saying he was born 10 years too early. He had been born in you know, 1990, I think, or whatever. And we can project in the future 10 years. He would have been treated with focused ultrasound. And the outcome would have been far different. He would probably have, the tumor would eventually kill him. Right, he doesn't live a normal lifespan. No, he would probably live at the age of 36, probably live long enough to see his kids grow up with a high quality of life. And so I, I take the reader through that uh, version of the story. At the end, I talk about the foundation and where we are, and uh, there's a very soft ask for money at the end, and that's... That's the tumor. You've written a lot of uh, incredible bestsellers that have been made into blockbuster movies, yet you call this skinny little thing the most <laughs> important book that you ever wrote. Well, I don't, uh, yes, and I still say that. Um, Why is that? This is the only book I've written that has the potential to save and improve tens of thousands of lives. It, can, I mean, it, has, it has the potential of helping that effort, the effort of focused ultrasound, and to raise awareness, and to raise money, and to kind of push the ball down the field. We're going to get there, you know, we're going to get there. It, it may be three years, five years, ten years, you know, but one of these days we're going to be able to, to zap brain tumors and give the patient ten more years. Maybe, fit, who knows, maybe more, we don't know. When I talked to you at the end of March, uh, and then we aired a piece on CBS this morning on uh, April 20th, you were pretty pumped up about this. Mm -hmm. Are you just as much, more so? I mean, it's the same. I've, been, I've, I've had these feelings for a number of years now. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm flattered and, and surprised the book uh, could raise awareness like this. I, you know, I just didn't know what to expect. Uh, so I'm happy that that's working. It's still working. It's still How well is it working? How many books have, uh, and by the way, this, you're giving this book away for free. Big mistake. I wish I'd charge for it. <laughs> It's the only free book I'll ever write, I promise you that, okay? Uh, Until you do an update or a sequel. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, we decided to do it for free. It was, you know, we, it, it, it's to raise awareness. You know, it's, it's not about making money. It's about hopefully raising awareness and the right person somewhere seeing the book, seeing the story, and that person touched by tragedy that can give us a call and say, okay, I, you know, I want to get involved and I can write a big check. You know, we need money. We need money for research, money to fund the foundation, 
you know, 90% of our income is all privately uh, uh, given. So we need to raise funds. Uh, so there was never there was never a question of uh, charging for the book. Uh, it was just uh, it's a small book, and and we're you know we're we're still moving them. You know, if, if we keep at the same rate, we'll, we should be close to a million by the end of the year. What's so. the reaction been from your fans and readers? Uh, I, I think they're generally pleased. Uh, I've got, I actually have received some very nice notes and letters uh, from around the country from people who are very sick or have sick loved ones who are desperate for help. And yes, yeah, it's, it's, from my end, it's, it's all been uh, good. You only support a very small number of charitable causes. I mean, you could support lots and lots. And of course, there are hundreds of medical right. charities right. out there. Why did you, do you feel you made the right decision by supporting this one? And do you feel as good about it now as you did on the day you decided? Well, we're lucky, my wife and I are lucky that we are able to support a number of nonprofits. Um, very few in the medical field. Uh, as far as supporting them with my time, uh, I've got it down to two. Focused Ultrasound and the Innocence Project in New York. And, and two foundations, two nonprofits that I really uh, believe in and enjoy the work and enjoy being around the people who, who run them and, and the work that they do. The, it's, it's remarkable that the potential, uh, the potential for each is, is so different. With the Innocence Project, we have now, uh, after spending 25 years, been able to exonerate 350 men from, wow. and about, uh, about 100 were from death row. So that number is small, whereas the focused ultrasound, we're talking about millions, eventually millions of people whose lives could be saved or improved with this technology and science. And knowing that is what keeps you going. It's a, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It's a challenge. It's, uh, it's uh, you're doing God's work. You, you know, you're, 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 you're really doing something to help people. What is the most rewarding thing for you about all of this? When you see the patients, after the treatment. Uh, we treated 15 uh, essential tremor patients at UVA, where we live in Charlottesville, uh, in the, our clinical trial. And the um, results were astonishing. And so after we, and you can, you can see these online, our website, you can see the results, the videos. Uh, after we, they were all treated, Neil threw a big lunch for them at the foundation in Charlottesville, and, they, and I think all of them showed up. And I sat next to a lady, one of the patients, she was a few years older than, than, than me, and she said she had, her, her whole life, she had been, well, the past 20 years, she would not eat with anyone but her husband because she made such a mess. Her tremors were so bad. It was debilitating. There were so many things she couldn't do. And we were sitting there having lunch. She was fine. And, um, and we went around the table and talked to them, and, and it, the stories are astonishing. When you um, I have a close friend, a very close friend, who was suffering from um, um, fibroids, and she was treated uh, in Charlottesville uh, a couple of years ago with a remarkable success. Um, when you meet the people who, it's one thing to watch the videos. When you meet the people who've been treated and you see how their lives have been transformed, uh, it's, it's very gratifying for me as a board member, uh, for uh, the folks who run the foundation, for the doctors who do the work, for the people here who do the research. Uh, it's extremely rewarding. Thank you, guys. This was a terrific session. Could not have been better. Nope.